Yes. Yes. Okay. Terrific. So tonight we saw um, a separation. It's the film of, um, under analysis. And like we always do, let's identify the four through lines, not in dramatic as, you know, speak, but just sort of the general sense of either who the characters are or what's going on in the, in the through lines. And so the big picture, overall story, what does that seem to be? Like in a sentence, what seems to be the. Is the protagonist going to be sent to prison for a year and a half for throwing a woman down the stairs? Okay. Um, and it's a question did he did he kill her baby or not? That's, that's question. like a secondary question. The real question is it's irrelevant as to whether he did it or he didn't do it. They're going to send him to jail. But it, um, because he did it. Okay. Because they think he did it. So, so the only question is is he going to jail because of this? Okay. Um, all right. So, and what are, what are the characters' names? We've got Sinin, um, which is the mother. I don't know who the. Uh, uh, names we, we have <laughs> we have a cheat sheet. Uh, Nader, the father. Okay, I don't think it's. Yeah, it's okay. I don't think I remember think, hearing it. Either. So we're seeing it in the subtitles. N A D E R. According to this. Terme, the daughter. And, um, oh, then we don't have the name of the young woman now. Uh, elf, the elf. I can't remember the name. Quite not. So, uh, I guess what you're saying is, well, Nader goes to jail. Yeah. Okay. So I think the broader question is, is you know, taking care of the family. Uh, it's, you know, he's trying to take care of the family, his father and his daughter, and the marriage. Although he's kind of letting. The marriage go, but but and then and then the, the the pregnant woman is trying is kind of trying to take care of her domestic situation because her her husband is is has already been to jail and, and is threatened to go to jail more for being in debt. Um, All right. So everyone's feeling the pressure of these very um, untenable situations. Okay, and that the Will Nader go to jail is sort of a subset of within maybe a part of the plot part of that, but not necessarily thematically going on. Yeah, well, it's 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 part, yeah, it's a plot thing, yes. I mean, because you do more see more the beginning starts with about with whether or not this family is going to be separated, and you have at the end whether or not the family is going to be separated, and even the, whether or not you pay the blood money and stuff. You know, her argument, uh, Celine's argument is always is about looking at the family, and of course, Nader is just concerned with look at, you know, what does it say about me? Is I innocent? I didn't do this. Okay, I lied about one thing, but I didn't cause this bigger problem. I think that the um, overall story is about a separation, about what you were just talking about. It's about um, Simeon and Nader going through a divorce. Okay, and uh, and everything falls within that then. I mean, you know, the reason they hire the, the help is because of the separation. Yeah, I believe that the um, the, the jail, the, the issue with the pregnant woman, Rizé, I believe that would all fall under the relationship story. Okay. Yeah. Well, perhaps. I mean, depending on what we who we determine to be in the. Uh, <laughs> of course. The main influence, but that could that could be in fact what's going on there. Okay. So, uh, well, who do we see as the the main character? Whose story are we? Um, if I may, I see I see the father as the main character, and I didn't figure that out, or at least I didn't make that determination until the very end of the story. Wow, that's the end of the story. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty late to be standing in someone's shoes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was it was a it was a 
close draw if he was in the mob, but I would say that it was more more time on him spent throughout. You know, they did give a lot of time. When she was on screen, it was close on her, but he was on screen there. And, and I think he was. See, what, what's wanky about this is that, the, first of all, first of all, we had a poster that emphasizes uh, the woman over the, over the mm -hmm. you know, the mother over the, the father. And then we had the opening scene where the camera is clearly emphasizing her, okay? And then, you know, so we think we're following her, and then uh, then she kind of goes away, and we spend all this time... No, the opening scene... Well, after the, the, the opening scene, yes, the two the two of them sitting before some judge, and, right. you know, and it's just a, a single, continuous shot. Right, how could it be favoring, one, how could it be favoring her over here? Because she's the one who comes in, you know, looks at the camera, her, you know, the, the eye, her eyes are connecting with the camera. His eyes never connect with the camera. Um, it, it's just a slight, slightly more emphasis on her, and so we're, we think we're going to be following her, and then, and for the whole like first act or even first half, I was viewing the father as kind of more of an objective character. But we were spending so much time on him, and with her off screen, that's like, what am I, you know, when am I going to get back to her, her story? So it, it felt like the the way it was it was shot was favoring her as the main character, but then, but but then she's she's absent for too long. And then late in the movie, when she kind of comes back to deal with the situation, where we are favoring him as the the empathetic character. So it's you know I I think ultimately the intent is that he Nader the father is the main character, but it wasn't really expressed that way through at least half the film. Well, I have to agree with Jim on that. Oh, uh, well, actually, that was Sandy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, the uh, the also part of it is is that who's the proponent of the separation? Jesus. She is. Yeah. That's part of I think why you have that dominance um, term the first part because they're sort of setting up all the logistics of everything that's going to have to follow. You know, so that we find out really what's going on. Not that she's, you know, she's not really going to leave. This is a test. But we're not, as an audience, we're not the ones being tested. But the husband has done. We, get, we see him as he goes through, through all these things that, that test his, uh, well, everything about being, you know, a husband, a father, a man, a, you know, a, a Muslim. I mean, all the different personal things in his life are each one are being challenged, and he's you know trying to uh, sort of hold up against all of that onslaught. Yeah. Okay. That, so, so. So it so, takes a while. We, we we do empathize with him eventually, but. Yeah, and I think that's what we were. That, the, the, who's it said? Uh, it said that this the, the very end. You thought that you identified it at oh. the end. Someone. Oh, oh right, right. Sorry, right. that's right. Um, yeah, that's where I think you know, it's very clear where your sympathies are. Whether you're empathizing with them is another thing. But you're certainly your sympathies seem to be with him because we don't, we're not emotionally connected to the mob. We understand her logistic argument, and all he's constantly making a very logical argument about this is what's best for the daughter. These are the things. You know, this is why it's redone. But every time she's asked. You know things that require the emotion, or things about the emotional connection, or the relationship. She's, she's always very, you know, cold about that. And so I think that that's that's the part yeah. of that. Yeah, so, uh, he is. I mean, the mom is helps you out caring for the daughter, but she's not caring for the father or the other caring for the daughter. She's caring about herself. Yeah. That's it. And the daughter goes along with yeah, what is in her interests. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. And another thing was that, you know, in the opening scene, she says she wants to leave and take her daughter with her and like leave the country because of the circumstances. And 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 that's never that that's why I, I was surprised that this movie turned out to be so domestic in nature, when the opening scene kind of hinted that there was some, you know. Ah, that's just American. That's our American bias, assuming it's going to be political. No, but I but that's based on the opening scene. 
they yeah, talk about the situation and I don't want my daughter to grow up here. And then there's right. the, the questions are about right. what was the situation. But well, I think the, the situation in Iran is you wouldn't be able to make a movie about that. So the movie has to be something different. Right. See, mm -hmm. and, and the place yeah, of, the the place of, the place of women, role of women, and, and the, you know, the environment for, for a young girl trying to develop. And, and she, the mother was was not from Iran, or she was, seemed to have a more worldly demeanor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, certainly a more upper class, uh, you know, high class, more well-to-do husband. Unless the most Americans don't know this, but Iran is a basically a European country, except for their weird religion. Culturally, they were very different, and on the same level, most of them. So, the men's costumes are sure that. Yeah. You see the guy dressing, in, in the last scene, you see the guy dressing, he comes out with, you know, yeah. like this is a, now his wife's got a little headdress, but, uh, but and she's wearing jeans, but that's why she, also wearing jeans? she was wearing jeans. I think through most of it. That, that's why it seemed like she was not of the, of the country. But but I think what I'm saying is a more point that culturally speaking, you know, there um, I think there are things there there's sort of subtext going on that we may or may not pick up on here because we're not of that culture, that okay. country. Okay. So is everybody comfortable with Nader being the main character? Yes. Okay. Good. Now, influence character. Who do we see as the influence character? Yes. I, I would say that it's the daughter. Okay, and because? Uh, because she causes him to change. From having to tell the lie to feeling the need to tell the truth, or at least accepting that, all right, I've got to settle for this, and the only way I'm going to get through this is just to tell the truth and to let things be as, as they will. Okay, is that a personal issue for him, or is that part of the sort of the bigger picture? Well, yeah, but I think it's both. Very careful, being very careful about you know positioning, you know where his through line is, because we really haven't discussed what he's dealing with but personally. So just asking for your clarification, not not challenging. Right. Um, I see. I see the daughter as whenever she's involved, she. She helps him realize that he's got to be a little bit different. And with his wife, I mean, the wife is always the possibility of an impact character, I think, just as far as formula is concerned. But um, I, I just see the daughter as making a bigger difference in his, in his life. The, the things that she does, the standpoint that she takes, has, in my opinion, a, a tendency to cause him to change more. He sees the world in a different way because of the way she reacts, or okay. her position. Um, support? Alternatives? I'm willing to share. Seeing them turn it together. Seeing mother, mother and daughter? Good hand on. How does, okay. And well, just because we, we see, we meet Seeing first. She's trying to convince him to go with her. And but Samin doesn't share the same perspective as the daughter. Well, in some ways she does. Not at the per not remember Samin is all about basically I want things sort of without Islam. And her daughter's like, no, I'm she's embracing it, you know, in her education. Her studies, everything. She's completely embracing that part of her life, and that's which is where her father is. Well, I, I just see that um, you know they, they, they bring up the point, and at least the wife brings up the point that the reason the daughter stayed with him is so that she wouldn't leave. So I, I sort of see that as uh, the daughter is is trying to in for the marriage and for both of them. Sure, but, but that's against. kind of what the separation is about. That's I think that is. In this separation, or you could say, at, you know, I mean, sometimes in a subjective story, there is sort of a third wheel who sometimes speaks to the relationship, mm -hmm. um, uh, and may or may not be a proxy for the a character at that point. But um, but sometimes there is a third person involved, right? Right. But if sure, who comments on the on the relationship? They're both exactly. trying to influence him. They were saying that 
the mother's influence is more heavy to do with the overall story. It, well, there are scenes where the two of that, where, where she's speaking on Simeon's behalf, and I think we probably have to go through and figure out which ones are overall story and which ones are mm -hmm. talking to the relationship and which ones are talking just about Simeon. I mean, about uh, Sarme. You have a big question mark. No, I just I think it's Tara, and I don't. I think she's the change character. I think she's impact. I think she changed. Oh, okay, well we'll get to the resolve. Yeah, but I think it's Tara. Tara. I think it's Tara, and I think she's the change. I I agree that it's Tara, and and the reason is, and that's and why I think the wife is more in the in the objective story is because it seemed like the, in the objective the overall story through like everyone is blaming Nader. Everyone is being argumentative for the sake of being argumentative. Uh, and and overly defensive and you know and, but she's kind of joining in on the the sort of um, you know she's jumping on the blame Nader wagon like everybody else and where no the, the wife is the daughter is the only one who seems to to you know uh, connect with Nader just on a on a more personal level says well did you or did you not just to, you know as opposed to just jumping on the blame him with uh, uh, train, you know, she's just saying, well, what, what's really going on? Right. And, you know, just well, human more, to human. <laughs> more than that, then why questioning him? If, are, are you not, well, then why did, you know, he answers, and then she says, well, why did you then say this? Or how did you know that? Right. And so she's the one who seems to be connecting to, who wants to just, who's, she's dealing with him as a person, not as an object of, object to blame. Right. Like everyone else is. Okay. So. so what is, uh, so everybody seems to be Kosher with Tarame being the, the uh, influence character, right? Yeah, I, I'm dissent. I dissent. I would uh, I vote for Raze. Oh, for the uh, how, uh, Raze? Okay. And how so? I think that um, the other characters mentioned are actually part of the overall story, and I believe that she is representative of a conflicting point of view um, about the just maybe the first 10 or 15 minutes into the story I got the impression that this movie was about women not taking responsibility for their actions first demonstrated by Simon and then second demonstrated by Rizé and that would point to her changing and him staying the same, Nader staying the same because she have eventually at the end finally s takes responsibility for her actions in front of God and decides to not swear on the Bible that, that it wasn't his fault. Thoughts? I think, that, I think that's part of the objective story yeah. argument, personally. I, I don't see that being part of the, the emotional subjective story argument. Okay, well, um, why, in, why my, we, in my view. Well, right now, why don't we, why don't we go with Tarame, but also keep Rose in mind when we start answering questions or thinking about the relationships and the domains. You know, there may be some parallels going on there that maybe there is a, a handoff or there's a parallel or something. Although I don't know that Tarame and Rose, at least on the surface, appear to be similar, but maybe there is. I don't know. Okay, so what would the relationship between Nader and Termay be? Father daughter, okay. Right. What kind of relationship? Father daughter relationship? Um, I don't know, they're, they're kind of in it together. They want to hold the family together. So, okay, yeah. so they're close knit. Yeah. I, uh, I don't fully understand the question, so I don't know the right vocabulary to answer that, but they. They have a strong sense of family because the father is very supportive of the daughter. In the car at the gas station, when he made her go back and get the change, uh, she comes into the car, she gives him the change and says, here, and he says, you keep it. Right. Uh, so he's very supportive in that respect. So they, I, I think that it's a very supportive relationship, but I don't know what type of answer you're looking for. No, that's a, that's the nature. I mean, it's about, but if that's a, a father daughter, a father's trying to to teach his daughter how to live and exist and, and grow and work in the real world, as a, you know that she's eventually going to be, you know, going out into um, the one that her mother is trying to protect her from. 
essentially. He's trying to help prepare her for it. At least in that scene, I would, I would suggest that. Now, what do we see between uh, Nader and, and Jose as a, 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 what kind of relationship would that be? Um, boss employee? Uh, and boss employee, sure. Um, uh, well, you know, if I were to associate this to an archetype, this is a very loose association. But I'd, I'd associate Rizé as the contagonist. Now, you understand, though, if you use archetypes, you're basically casting them in the overall story. So that is the context of, you know, the separation and, and things that make this, that should be the ones making the separation more and more difficult, which would, in fact, seem to kind of play into that. Um, but how would it be, how would the relationship between Nader, not the father or the husband, but Nader, and Rizé, not the help, but this Muslim, married Muslim woman in, who's working in his home, what kind of relationship is that? And accuser see, that's why I, and accused. Pardon? Accuser and accused. That would describe it like for the second half. But, but not the entire time. So, um, employee, employer. I think what you had before was good. Okay. All right. Well, let's just. I'll put that in there. You know, to me, that that describes their objective relationship. Not, not really a. You know, that's remember this. This the relationship lines where the heart of the story is. So, I mean, there's definitely a lot of emotion on her part. Um, Employee, uh, uh, employer, employee. Okay. Do you know the name of the crazy husband? The crazy husband, um, not of hand. Um, it's R O D G A T. Oh, Rajit. R H R A G. Actually, two J's. R A J J I T. I think. R I. R A R A I M D B says H O J J A T. Oh, okay. was <laughs> And uh, her name is R A Z I E H. R A Z I E H. Thank you. Did he say E-H or G-H? E-H. 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 Yeah. I don't think they have G-H. <laughs> they wouldn't be using a, an old English, you know, hip phone. Um, especially because it's not really, you know, written in English. Um, okay. It's only translated that one. Mm, oh, boy. Uh, let's start with main character approach. Let's, let's do an easy one. At least, I mean, that, that should be pretty easy. Maybe it's not. But. So when we look at Nader, is Nader more of a doer or a beer? Does he try to, does he prefer to solve problems externally, or does he prefer to solve them internally? I feel it's internally. I think he's a beer. And please give examples. Uh, well, to compare him to uh, the other gentleman that was just mentioned, uh, the guy with the H-A-J-J. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, he's he's the more violent one. He's, he displays physical aggression all the time, but Nader the father does not. Uh, Nader the father is very cool, calm, and collected. He he and even I'll go to the very opening scene when he's with his wife in front of the divorce judge or whatever the person was. Um, he's not getting physically out of control. He's not slapping the wife or anything like this uh, because he needs to put her in her place. He's Still, it's an argument, but it's still a discussion. And and towards the end, he finally says that all right, if, if she wants to go, then go. Then I will get the divorce. He makes the decision to to have the divorce, and he doesn't do it in in a way that takes physical action of any sort. It, okay, can you give me some examples that are of his through line, things of his, him personally, not things that are part of the big picture? Because those two events could be him acting in his role in the overall story. 
as opposed to what he does, how he solves, how he prefers to solve things personally. I'd have how to about, think about that more. Sorry. How okay. about at the gas pump? Instead of getting out of the car saying, "Hey, give us our change," he said he tells the daughter, "You you go do this, and I'll sit back here and watch." Okay. Well, and everything with the daughter, he said, "If you think if you think I'm guilty, then do this." He kind of leaves it in her hands. He doesn't. Yeah, he does what? a lot. He's very manipulative. And when the wife's going, he just assumes, "All right, I'm just going to take her laundry duties." He just assumes uh, a persona that just says. I'm not bothered by this at all. I can take on whatever is needed of me. Okay. That guy with everybody? Some more internal groups. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, and he sure comes off as being passive aggressive. <laughs> 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 you know, I think also part of what was mentioned earlier uh, in the first scene, where he's not looking at the camera, he, he looks away from people. He, he, he you know, doesn't make on eye contact with them when he hears things he doesn't like. He doesn't confront them directly. He's always sort of trying to deal with it himself as opposed to, you know, bringing it right to them. Whereas his wife, exactly the opposite. You know, his wife is the one that goes to this school. His wife, the one who talks to the, you know, the, uh, the, to, um, Rosie, yeah, I mean, his wife is constantly in the doing, 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 so. Um, okay, so it's a beer. All right, and um, I want to pop down to the story driver. So is it an action-driven story or a decision-driven story? Do actions drive decisions, decisions drive actions. I think the most telling thing is look to the, look to the inciting event in the act terms is really where you're going to see it. Um, the major, the major act turn is um, the miscarriage, or or at least him sort of pushing her out the door. Um, uh, Jim was shaking his head. <laughs> I, I may be wrong, but it just seem like that's the major turning event. Well, what uh, it, what what but, happens just immediately prior to that? He uh, he see he's uh, well the he comes home to find the father. You know, uh, barely alive and tied up. Uh, but what we find out later is what preceded that was, you know, she had to go to the doctor because she got hit by a car the day before, which is another action. Yeah, it's, but we don't see that. It's, I it's, know we don't see that, but it's revealed later that that's being part of. Right, the but but we but right. again we don't see it. I mean, it's, the thing is, is that when you're talking about, you have to. The, the overall story is about a separation. I mean, yeah. the biggest clue is the beginning and the end. Yeah, I mean, well, the end. I'm, that's what's the title. Well, true. But it begins with no. Like, but we don't. We actually we don't get the answer to that. But it has to begin. It well, begins it with the decision: the is he going to accept the divorce or is he not? It has to be consensual, right. and it ends with her decision who she's going to live with. So I think the whole right. thing is decision based. And that's kind of why I put deliberation. Yeah. Because it's not. We always that we we think of action as either a process. Or an event. Right. We think of decision as an event. We don't really think of it as a process. That's why but deliberation is the process. And I agree. The beginning and the end definitely point toward deliberation. And but he decides to he decides to fire. Her. That's what causes the whole oh, fight. All right. Well, which okay. follows up with the pushing and the all that stuff. I mean, okay. or her decision to leave the, the father alone. You know. Well, well no, her that, decision to come back after she's been kicked out. I mean, you, you know, you can see that, that yeah, I mean, we, we see the, the in-betweens on it. It's, I think in the middle, you know, where's some other big, big turning points? The decision to um, go forward with resolving this, which is the action of, okay, I'll write the checks. Right. You put your hand on the button. The right, and then she won't do that. And right, just, and those actions yeah. would not have happened if he didn't decide, okay, fine, I give up. I will do my fatherly duty, protect my family. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like, that is, brings it to the, you know, the last act where we have that. You know, really and then the judge's decisions constantly are kicking the clock over. What he decides about. Take him away from being in contempt and 
you, you know, science now, you know, I mean, the judges frequently making decisions that egg things on. Right. Now, I mean, you have the, you know, you have the, the like the key events, the key actions that seem to you think are sort of driving it. They all happen off screen, and they all happen sort of either you find out much later because the her getting hit by the car may have caused the you know the, her losing the baby. It's you know they, they it's likely, but it isn't definitive. You know and. Certainly, you can't say well. Certain actions were taken because of that, because they weren't. Okay. Well, what? Because the characters didn't know. And yet, see, it's, what's important in, in that instance, the characters were not aware of it, so there were no actions, no decisions made on that, following that until like the end of the story. All right. Well, th well, I'll take that that signpost then. That first to second act plot turn up uh, would interpret that as being her decision to accuse Nader. For her miscarriage, uh, right. would be what sets off the second act, yes. rather than the actual falling down the stairs right. or whatever happened. Because we all know exactly. What, I mean, we kind of get that she was kind of manipulating the situation too. All right, right. she because she was, you know, she's she yeah she she's she completely fails to like come forward just to say what happened, um, and uh, uh, always yeah always hiding something for some reason, and uh, uh, so. So I guess the event itself, the action itself, is not what turns the events, but it's the way she dealt with that. That um, and really the whole taking it to the judge is the well, turning. the whole end part start the last act starts when she's obviously decides to tell the truth to the wife. That leads to everything that happens after that. It's you know her deciding to come clean is the beginning of. You know, the truth is out, and that's the beginning of the end of them. But the last act of the movie brings it up to the climax, and then you know the resolution. I mean, that's that's a really big decision moment where she's okay. I'm going to tell you this, but you know, you can't tell anybody. You promised not to tell anyone, right? Yeah. And and she and from all we can tell, she didn't tell anybody. Her husband's just. Really dogged and, and knows he didn't cause it, and was just, you know, he's trying to find the answer to that. You know, it's just an overall impression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like Iranians, his entire ambiguity is just part, part of the way of thinking. Certainly, and, and also the way in which they, they, they tell it. They involve us in the same arguments because only later it reveals to us that the woman had that all the problem. We don't know. But the characters didn't know either, and that's the important part. See, if the characters knew and well, we didn't, so it was a reveal to us, kind of like in Oblivion. It wouldn't be a movie. It, but no, well, it would. It would be different. It'd be like Oblivion, where a good portion of the characters already know what's going on. We just are with the main character and have no clue what's really going on. It's been far too long hiding the story from us because they got this fake story going on, right? Mm -hmm. That is one in which the characters are quite aware, except the main character, quite aware of what's really happening. In this one, there is one character that knows, and she is not telling anybody. So the the fact that the reveal She's revealing. No, but the event. Yeah. And and what it also reveals is that she let she let, she wasn't doing her job. She wasn't watching the grandfather. Which is what she's supposed to be doing. Which is one of the reasons why she didn't tell anybody, because if she did, which would have been, you know, which allowed her to, well, she was following up on it, seeing the doctor, et cetera. But, you know, it's it's not only was she hit by the car, but she did it when she was doing her job poorly. You know, so there's the guilt of that, too. You know, she knew, for her, she made a decision to stay on when she knew that, that she shouldn't. She called up and said, okay, is this a sin? But she knew perfectly well once he wet himself and she had to, you know, it's like, this is not supportable. And then yeah. she lies about her husband and all this stuff. I read a friend of mine, like, he's an Iranian. We studied with our students in London in the late 70s. I remember. There was a lot of good company in the but I don't know that. 
Hmm. I would like to be a, a sure. on the Iranian staff. Well, one. one of the things that, you know, the only thing we can do is, since we're Americans, we need, we need to interpret it as we can see it and try to understand what it means to us. Now, hopefully, that translates into the intent. And it, hopefully, the story form helps to filter out a lot of the, um, the cultural bias. You know, it, it tends to cut past that because you're dealing with far more abstract things than the expressions. Of it. But we're using the expressions to, to interpret them. So. Just look at the employee, how careful she was when she had to deal with the old man. There were all the religious issues. Right, right. You know, that she wanted to follow. Right, which is, I think, also educating this audience what the mother was concerned with about her daughter having to deal with a world that's so different from our culture. But there's another, another element in here, now that she has to deal with her husband, and she's scared of her husband, she says, he'll kill me if he finds out certain things. Yeah, right. I think so, that was so literal. That, that was so that she was, uh, that she was um, uh, acting to protect herself from a crazy husband. She, but she's I also studied this when I took, when I took Kate, when I, I attended a, a seminar on rape. And one of the things they told us is that many rape victims, if you get them alone, will admit that they were not raped, but they're saying it because they have to, uh, they have to, to they have to tell their family this. Right. And if you can get them away, you can get the charges dropped. Okay. Um, story limit, time lock or option lock? Time lock. Basically, it's getting to the point where they're going to have the trial. They're running out of uh, preliminary hearings. So it has to be resolved. Well, there's no. There's no, no there's she, says, she says she's going to leave in two weeks at the beginning, or three weeks, or whatever. Four weeks, or whatever. Or whatever. She, she says four weeks to leave. Right. We have no time, no clue how much time has actually elapsed once she said that, well, because yes. it turns out that was a lie. She was just saying that because she was trying to uh, get her, you know, prove to her husband that she means business when she didn't. She already, her daughter even knew. You told me you're not going. This is this isn't true. You're not going to leave if he doesn't agree to it. May, may I add? I'm sorry. May I interrupt? Um, in the beginning with the judge again, uh, that she said uh, the wife said that the visa expires within 40 days. Well, we right. only have 40 days. But even so, um, I don't feel that it was a time lock because that was never addressed again after that point. Right. Yeah. And right. It was it was set up as pressured on the on the husband and trying to bring it. To, you know, faster resolution, but yeah, it, it really nobody was nowhere. watching. The well, then she even said later that the daughter knew she wouldn't go anywhere without the daughter. So as long as the daughter was right. with the husband, so it was she negated. Was going it was set up and negated almost yeah. immediately. There's no I, ticking clause. I yeah. came away with the feeling that Nadir was at the point that he's going to give the money or he's going to go to prison for between one and a half and three years. I felt that that's what that was what was uh, was forcing them to resolve. I think the pressure with the money came from the mom wanted it resolved because she was afraid that the crazy husband was going to take it out on the daughter or the father. And there was never a stated date that we were all yeah. looking forward to. The trial well, no, but, but a time lock can be a, a quantity of time. So 42 days is, is quite sufficient. But you but have they, to then... They didn't address it. You have yeah. to, right. Not only do you have to remind us of when that's approaching and that it has been met, but you also then... They also have the other side where they basically said, Oh well, that was just to get your father to think this is real. If we keep running out of options, like the option is, you know, can you prove it? Can you not prove it? And he tries, you know, showing that you know she could have been pushed down the stairs, and he just goes through all these things. And the final option is pay the but, money. But well, it's, it's, it's how many? Yeah. I mean, so really, I it's like about how many different ways can they try to resolve the relationship without a separation. That seems to be sort of what the options are. It, the further and further goes, it looks like it's going to be an, end up in a, in a separation, which is not what he wants, it's not what she wants, it's not what the daughter wants. So you've got this separation uh, that nobody wants. It's sort of the consequence rather than the actual you know, goal. The goal is reconciliation, the stated goal, Mm -hmm. Or the implied goal. The stated goal is is a, a separation, but that's really everybody doesn't want it happen. That's just sort of what they were saying. And so it, the, and it and there's okay, you know they, she moves out. That's like the first option. You have the mother move away from the the home. So then you have the you know keeping the family running. That's when they hire in uh, Rizé. 
Brazé, or whatever her name, you know, name is pronounced, um, to help. And, you know, then that goes sour, and then how, you know, what, then we have to worry about the daughter's education, and then that gets tainted, and then he has to worry about, okay, I got this nutcase who's possibly going to attack my family. You know, all right, fine. You know, I'll sign this blood money thing, because even though I, but, but then he, he has to put that condition on. Well, that's <laughs> what I don't and, that, and that's what causes the, con that's what brings it, the options are gone, that was the last piece, and that's the thing that drew it into into the crisis. But he, he can't be sure that he didn't cause it. He didn't cause it. He, he didn't cause it. He no, he know, even said he, he was. The car. He even said he was certain it was impossible for him to cause it. The way the way he was standing in the door and the way he pushed her, she would either have gone to the upper stairs or to the, the railing that was straight ahead, not down the stairs. He even states it toward the end after it's like. It all comes true. I mean, all comes clear. He's like, you know, the I knew it moment. You know, that couldn't have been. It couldn't have been it. Well, I'm not convinced that he he ever really was going to give them the money. I think he he like he wrote out the checks, but he put that condition no, on it because he knew that she wouldn't swear in the Quran, and he knew that that would vindicate him. Well, he, so or I don't, I don't or think if she did, he know that okay, I'm in, I'm backed into a corner. This is my only way out. I think especially he, since I think I'm putting fam, I'm putting family. Ahead of my interests, if, if she comes clean on this one, my, you know, I'm, I'm still think I'm, in, I know I'm innocent, but this is more important for my daughter and her safety, and more important, you know, mm -hmm. primarily for the daughter. That's what he's really thinking. About. I don't know. I, th I think he, was, I think he was manipulative gambit. I think he knew that she wouldn't do it. I don't think, well, I don't think he ever thought he was at risk of losing the money or he was ever gonna have to admit. He, you know what I mean? I don't think he ever thought he was gonna have to pay it. I think he knew she wouldn't do it because he knew. Well, okay. So I think it's, yeah. it, that that you can. You so can I don't think it ever really that. put his family. I think it looked like he did. But I don't think it ever really put his family's interests ahead of it. I think he knew that it, it was going to push her and that she wouldn't be able to do it. Okay. I don't. I, I mean, personally, I don't think his wife told him. I don't think she told him. I just think he knew that she wouldn't do well, it. Well, he, 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 he risked it. Yeah. Okay, so it's an option. Um. All right, let's go back up to main character resolve, changes steadfast. Uh, and we're looking initially at, well, if we look at Nader first, because he's the one that's, that's, that's um, in both, whether we're looking at Tarmay or, or is it? Um, changes steadfast, and please explain why I give examples. I think he's a change character because in the first part of the story, he's telling a lie to cover his ass. But in the second part of the story, he changes and says, all right, we've got to go with the truth. Or at least he lets other people tell the truth. Now, he doesn't to the judge, but he, he concedes and just lets, lets things happen as they will. I think he's steadfast. I don't think he changes yeah, at all. I mean, um, Kermit is the one who lies. Yeah. The one who, yeah. Well, not very yet, though. That's, um, um, water tells, not, tells him, maybe here, she is here. Right, that, that's, that's a little back from the end, though. It's uh, about halfway through the right. half I thing. think he, he is said that because consistently throughout the entire movie, every time something comes up, he says, if you don't believe me, do this, when he knows she won't do it. And that happens at the end. To have, you know, when he says, if you think I did this and you tore in the Quran, he's always putting it back on other people. He never changes. Mm -hmm. He always manipulates the situation to where he knows he put them in the corner where they won't do it. With his daughter, he does it. You know, if you want me to tell the truth, I will tell the truth. If you think I'm guilty, if you think I'm, if you want me to, he says that when she said, did you lie? He says, if you want me to go out and tell them that, I will do it. And you know, I'm going to go to jail. He knows he's not going to make him do it. And he says, if you want me to, um, he, he doesn't tell her what the question is, but he knows, you know, but he sets it up so that she's forced to lie. He, um, there's another time or where makes he said, her want to lie. Yeah, makes her bridge. He knows that he's either a liar or he goes to jail. He, he uh, when he's like, if you think, if you, uh, you know, really want us to be together, we'll go out and tell your mom, and that you all know, do it. He knows she won't do it. So every single time he's faced with the situation, he always puts it back on them and makes them make the decision that he but wants he does, them to make. He does, he does it at the end, too. But so he, he also does come clean. Yeah, but, but all that, the whole tragic part of it is that, that pig headedness, that steadfastness. 
is what makes her ultimately have to change and choose one or the other. Yeah. But at the very beginning, she's not choosing anyone. She just goes with what's at going on. And at the end of the film, she has the whole point it. of the story is his uh, belligerence. Belli belligerence or whatever, his passive aggressiveness, led his daughter to a point where she actually had to pick between them. Well, and even the mother said, you think she chose you. She didn't choose you. She just knows if she goes with me, we're leaving. She's trying to keep us together. At the end, she was able to choose. We don't know who she chose, but we know she made a decision. So before she wasn't making a decision by saying to that, that was not deciding between them because it's the only way to get her mom to say. Mm -hmm. At the end, she changed and she made a decision. Whatever the decision is, she, she made changed. one. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. changed. And also, she's very black and white with honesty. You know, you said something that wasn't true. She wouldn't have been able to lie at the beginning, but you know, when she put in a situation, and the judge asked her, you know, did you tell your dad? And she said, yeah. So she changed from being black and white to seeing the face of gray. Yeah, I think there's some very subtle clues. Of, as to the author's intent, when uh, I forget what exactly what point, but it was very late in the movie. I think it may have been in that scene when he's outside, and he uh, and there was just this very slight smile when he's looking for the room where she, I guess she was, Terme was in with the with the judge there, and he was outside. And he just sort of cracked a small little smile as if he was saying, you know, I were you know, uh, I've I've influenced her. I've impacted her. She's, you know. I guess well, growing up, or or she's on more on my side now, or something to that effect. Yeah. But there, there was a, there, I think there were some subtle hints, and I do I I do think it's a hard pick, but I think that aspect of the story is very subtle. Yeah, um, but I don't think he did it. Yeah, right. It's not subtle at all. He no, did it not tell her. Well, I mean, you're at the end of the last image. What is it? Two of them. She's on. This side, and she's, on, she's side. on the other side of the, of the window. Separate mm -hmm. again. You know, she's in with everybody else. He's in next to us. I mean, the implication being that he, she's going to pick the father because of this thing they've gone through, but it's not explicit. I mean, and, and it's good. It and it's also the fact that she doesn't want to tell them. I think it, it builds into the meaning of the end as well, because you know it's not something that she was willing to share everything before. And now she's not comfortable sharing with both of her parents. But it doesn't matter who she chooses. No, it doesn't. The fact it, that she it doesn't matter, matter but the fact that she made a choice. Yeah. She said that about four times. So. We don't. We don't necessarily know that she made a choice. Because she didn't oh, make she it. Said it four times. Yeah, at least four times. <laughs> she made a choice. <laughs> no, no, she didn't make it in the story. That's off screen. She just said she did. No, and then she says, I made my choice, and then he said, can I, you know, can I, do I, can they, you know, do you want privacy, essentially, and you know, can they leave? Okay. The implication is, I don't want to say it in front of them. But I made a choice. Yeah. But the camera doesn't stay in the room where she's talking to the judge. The camera right. follows because, the right, husband and wife out. So the main character. Well, See, right. We're out there with him. We're in his shoes. We're not in her shoes. I was kind of expecting you to cut yeah. out on the face. So her choice to have them being sent out of the room with the camera following them could be a manipulative ploy to get her parents together one last time. No, no, no. no. By making separated. a choice, it means there is a separation. The fact that, the fact that a choice course. has been made where a choice was not made earlier. She would not choose between the parents at the beginning. Everything was a prolonging. Everything delay. was trying to keep it, the family together. The end, the fact that she made a choice meant they are not all together. One of them is out. It is so, no longer a family name. Fair enough. But so that tells me, I mean that's all for me it's all part of the overall story. Yes. Is, Raz, yes, yes, right. Razé, as far as being an impact character, I think that she changed and uh, Nader did not. That Nader did not change. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, okay, the dynamic's the same thing. In other words, the, the message is the same. So you could look to the Rize and see the exact same dynamic in that that she part of the story. Which is also an indicator what's going to what's coming up in the next scene with the the judge. You know, you know, here's this guy. He's had his influence on on one, and he's used the exact same technique on his daughter. We've seen it over and over again, and he had that effect on Rizé. And now, you know, the the fact that 
he's forced Terme to make a choice as opposed to being neutral. So um, I think that, you know, I think your examples with the, you know, his technique, using it over and over and over again, really all the way to the, to the crisis point he, where he's, you know, could theoretically, what he doesn't realize is that he could, he, he, it's going to destroy the family, but he's going to win and he's probably, he thinks he's going to get his daughter. But he's going to win personally. He always seems to be putting himself sort of a little bit before everybody else. Yeah. Just a little form beside the form. <laughs> all, all the smart things that people are saying, I'm here learning. It's the first time I'm here. Season is my favorite. Uh, there is another reason. Conscious or unconscious, most probably conscious by the filmmakers. Look how much you pay attention if you were capable of reading Iranian at the, at the titles of Jam. Yeah. Or see, you wouldn't read, you wouldn't read any, any kind of such again. But because you're waiting for an answer, right? you are there. And, and that's why when I came in and I said, yeah. it doesn't change. Yeah. There's, there's <laughs> nothing you're not going to get an answer without walking out and go, you're waiting at the same Mama! Time. Yeah. How long does she have to be in that room when I judge yes. anyway? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that, that, exactly. No, <laughs> that, that was the point of that. Rather than over black. And that's why yeah. I thought maybe Sam Jackson was walking into the room asking her to join the, the Avengers. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we see him as a steadfast yeah. character then. Right. Um, and then the story outcome, success or failure. Yeah, Is this about it. rescuing a, re a family or about trying to separate family? Rescue a family. Rescue. That's what we want to happen. Well, right. that's, I mean, you know, we're, at the end of it, does it seem like they, they, they succeeded or no. did they fail? It feels like a letdown. Right, right. But a letdown is, is, is has a couple of components, and we just have to sort of look at it logistically. At the beginning, um, and if you if you ever get, if you ever watch the DVD of this, watch the, um, watch it with the, uh, director's comments just for the first four minutes because it basically he, for him he said the first scene sets up the rest of the entire movie and that the audience is the judge. That's kind of why at the end the you know, same thing. We're the judge. Um, and he seemed at the beginning the judge seemed to be about reconciliation not trying to and he even said no and you've got to go through no, he's not going not to grant a separation. And so at the end, when a separation apparently is going to be granted, is that mean that it was a successful three months, two, three weeks, two weeks, however long it took, or was, did it lead to failure? They didn't do what the judge said. They didn't succeed in doing it. And you saw him doing that in all those uh, the different judges doing it in the other ones where they sort of like, okay, you're going to work this out, right? You know, try to figure this out. Even the blood money thing, try to try to work it out. They all seem to end in the same place. You know? um, so I think it's I think it's a failure. I think it's supposed to be a failure. I think it's a story about them trying to get back together and thus a failure. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. They didn't try that yeah. hard. And then I, I'm looking at the next Mom did. But when you asked and no, 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 no. Terame did. Terame. Well, she's Karen the one. It, she's so the one who wanted it to the right. Yeah, but I think so I feel like she's the only one, really. I mean, the husband. I don't know. Like when they. The tried. husband wanted it, but he wanted it for his own personal reason. Because, you know, when he has his wife, it's he's got. Wife. Yeah, it's a, he has someone taking care of his father. He sort of access to the mother's, you know, the mother, the mother's parents' money, you know, mm -hmm. all the, all that. All those positives that go along with her, not so much his wife per se, because she's obviously they have very different ways of seeing the world, which is what brought it to begin, which is what started it all, the conflict. So then we have the question of story judgment, good or bad. Okay, even though it's based on good for him, we feel bad about the choices he's made. I mean, he's a So the, the easy way to answer this would be. Does this feel like a personal tragedy or a personal triumph story? Or or, or, or tragedy. Or a tragedy. Yeah, but I mean, the, the good or bad would be, 
a personal tragedy or, or a tragedy. Right. Tragedy. Terme is crying at the end. Right. And, she is she's she's not, not happily crying. That's mm, you know, it's 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 ambiguous. But she's certainly not. And and this is where Melanie and I always tend to um, disagree because I tend to focus the story judgment really heavily on the main character, and she pretty much focuses it on the story. I think this is an instance where looking at how the story feels as opposed to the main character feels, especially since we're ambiguous about, ambiguous about where the main character is at the end, is a, is a good temperature to use with, with, with regards to the story judgment. Here's the I, I think it, you know, like the graduate had a very ambiguous ending. Even though he got the girl at the end, there, you know, you, you like look at their expression. Oh, but he was, I mean, he yeah. was, he was clearly satisfied. Now, well, it, but but it was very ambiguous. It was kind of like, you know, so what do I do now? You know? Right, right. And it felt like that. It felt so like it was, it was, it was purposely left it purposely ambiguous. And I don't know. I, I would probably not pick that and let the story form pick it for me. That's, so that's what I would do. It's, it's built in the story from the very beginning that there cannot be a success. The success can only be either for him or for her. Right, and that's why it's a logistical question. It's a success or failure, and, and that's, that's why it depends. That's, that's on. She wants a separation, he doesn't. It's about so who is trying to success or failure. Right, right, but he doesn't want it, but he seems to be the proponent of trying to keep it together. And Terme really doesn't want it. And ultimately, it happens, so that's why we would pick a failure. The question is, at the end of it, emotionally, are we in like a, you know, a, a, a tragedy, a family tragedy, or is this where, tragically, the family broke up, but main characters mm -hmm. still trying to make the best out of it. I guess, and the question, I, I don't think the author wanted us to feel good about the situation. I, but I think he wanted us to be to not really be able to tell. Right. I think this is this is where he wanted it to be ambiguous, which is it's why me. he didn't answer that. Because if she came out and picked one, we would then see the reaction, which would explain this one to a T, yeah, very clearly. Yes. Is it this, is the story outcome the objective story, and then the story objective and subjective? Yes, essentially. So it's it end, but we don't know the answer to her her choice. We don't know how to feel about it. But we know that she's not she's not great with having to make a choice, but she's also not like terribly broken up. And I think that's the nature of how she's grown over the story. She's grown to be comfortable with making a choice. So if we're going to an objective score, I can't feel like because objective scores scores just be off facts. So can objective logistics, not facts. Logistics is a better way of thinking. So I was thinking that objective story is about finding out who killed the baby and the subjective story. That's what that's within it. That's sort of like a little sub story within it. The mirror is it's really about it's really about the whole thing, it's all about dysfunctional families. Yeah. Yeah, trying to make trying to make this up functional families work. It doesn't work for any of them. None of them come out on the good end of it. Whether you're talking about no, nobody's smiling at the end of this. Well, nobody is successful at the end. Of this. Smiling is good and bad. Successful is yeah, no I mean is it. for your success or failure. It's, they all fail. The relationship between you know um, Sabina and Nader, as well as Reza and Haji, those those two both crash and burn. So I'm getting. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed with the conversation here. So I, I just want to interject a thought, and that is, could, with respect to the end of the story, could his not going to jail be considered good because, at least, the relationship still has a chance of surviving? No, I think it, it's not good necessarily because, remember, by the end of the story, him not going to jail is a moot. Because there is no case. You see, it, if if they brought all the information back to the courts, then you know, which at at the point where they find out exactly what's going on, they could have done that. The wife, the wife was trying to end it in success. 
she wanted to have her family back together or and not here. Yeah. And she wanted, you know, she wanted Ronze's family to be successfully back together. And that's, you know, why she didn't tell her husband, I, I think. Mm -hmm. Because if he knew, there was absolutely no way he would make that, even remotely make that gesture. You know, she had to coerce him into doing it for the good of the family and the safety of his daughter. So um, that's, that's, that's why it's really all about the objective story, the overall story, and why it's, you know, the goal is not achieved. So, you know, you could say the goal is about their family, the concern of the overall story is about dysfunctional families trying to function and them not working, but the goal is really from beginning to end, it's, you know, it's about everything happens because of this one dysfunctional family. You know, the relationship between Samin and, and Nader. Okay, so we'll just leave this one, we'll leave the judgment alone and hopefully some other choices we make will we'll, we'll do it. Um, main character problem solving style, linear or, or holistic? Probably it might be a little off, but this is, you know, does, does he tend to look to solve problems by, you know, looking at cause and effect? Or does he, um, or, you know, looking for clues to try to sort of figure out where that leads, or is he more holistic trying to identify and balance relationships between parties? You know, um, originally I, in, in my first draft when I went through and did the story for him, I, I chose linear, but I'm wondering now if, if the more holistic approach wouldn't be more appropriate because when he was thinking out how I think it's Razé could have fallen um, down the stairs. So in, in the beginning when he started to demonstrate that to others, I mean, first to his daughter and then to, to the police, um, he he's presented it in a very linear way, but he also interjected the thought that, hey, how do we know she didn't get hit outside of here? I mean, how do we know? The doctor said the baby died from a blow. Well, how do we know that happened from the fall of the stairs? Could have it happened from someplace else? Yeah, and of course, cause, it's still looking at cause and effect. Yeah, I think it's pretty limited. I mean, that 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 is just saying, you know, here's this effect. Do we know it's tied to that cause? You know, and that's more of a like a, I would say, you know, a, a, you know, looking for possible causes to that, you know, effect, rather than saying, well, it's it has to be this cause that I'm part of, maybe there's another cause that created this same effect. You do not look for cause and effect if you're talking about hol holistic problem solving. Things don't cause one another. Everything's in relationship to other things and that they influence, you know, they, they influence each other very holistically. Um, so that's, that's sort of the difference. I think the example you just gave is actually a really good example of them using cause and effect. Uh, logic. Yeah, we'll see her trying to prove on the stairs that it, things could not have ha transpired the way she claims it could have, and you know which step was she on? Well, you know, how, you know how did she get from you know? And, and also, his blind spot is actually his blind spot is holistic. Remember, his daughter asks him about, well, okay, you knew that she was pregnant, right? And after he came clean, he goes, yes. Well, then, why did you push her? And that, that's what he said, I, I wasn't thinking about that. So suddenly, you know, there was cause and effect. If he was thinking about the whole holistic relationship of things, he probably would have been aware that him having this, you know, this fight with her might be detrimental to her being her, or the health of her, her baby and may have been more aware of it and not have reacted the way he did so physically. But that was not even in his consideration. I think that that was an instance where you see it, him, by not using it, it blinded him to something they would otherwise might have seen. But even his justification for lying be linear thinking, because yeah, he basically if I, if I lie, I will. I know I, know I didn't. I know for I, you. Well, I know I didn't cause it, and so that lie would just cloud the issue and make it look like I did. So I'm right. not going to lie. 
you know, as I'm going to lie, but, you know, because ultimately the end is the same, the end we the innocent. Right, and you look at, at Rosé, and she's like, I can't, I cannot tell this lie, it will, it will change the balance of everything in my universe, and it may cause my daughter, you know, my, uh, our living daughter to die, or something had to have, have, have me, or my family, or what, you know, she's looking at how everything is connected, and that's why, because it, it was, if it was a cause and effect, that's why the guys in this are like, oh, just, hey, do whatever and take the money, um, whereas the women in it are using very, except for, except for Simeon, she's kind of westernized and does tend to use very linear thinking, um, but, you know, I think also Terme is trying to find balance, you know, relationship between things. And that's why she's, you know, struggling trying to understand how to get her family back together. All right. So then the last thing we want to do before we go to the computer is to identify the four through lines. And we've got situation, activity, fixed attitude, and manipulation, or psychology. Um, and we know our main character is a beater, so he's going to be he's going to be either here or here, we don't know which one, because those are both the internal domains. Um, and uh, anybody have suggestions for where any of these, either uh, main character, overall story, influence character, relationship, ought to be? Could, could his through line be in fixed attitude? Um, it, yes, it could. <laughs> <laughs> There's a 50-50 chance for it. Is. And so, and can you give some examples of, of how that would be? He seemed very bullheaded. He didn't waver from. No, I. Uh, there's no way she could have fallen down this way. I. I'm not culpable. <laughs> I'm right. You're wrong. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, um, I could interject. I I think that that's right for the main character, but. Right. This is the overall story that we're looking for, correct? No, he was he was suggesting the main character. Oh, the main character. Okay, then I, I won't disagree with that. Now I haven't changed it, but I I was just going to say the the overall story I think is psychology, but maybe that won't work because uh, because of the Quran. It, it's it, it seems that the predominant governing rules throughout this story is really governed by the Quran. About what's right and what's wrong to do. Can I can I uh, yeah. add to that and say I I I'm inclined to go to memory or I'm sorry fixed attitude for the uh, for the overall story, partially for <laughs> for for the reason he just said because and there's several reasons um, and one has to do with the way the chart played out but the but also I feel like Rajay, rather than being an impact character is probably arguably the antagonist of the story. In that, you know, I, I know there's a lot of things sort of creating the problem, but in terms of the very specific story goal of, of, of having to prove his innocence in this case, she's the one who initiates it because of her, because of, of her mindset that um, uh, uh, keeps her from just being upfront with what's been, what's really going on, and 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 worrying about what's a sin and what's not, and when when, she, you know. It, uh, when she's effectively sort of um, neutralized because of that extremely strong uh, mindset, um, she being uh, Roger, okay. right, 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 right. Um, uh, uh, then then that at, at least as far as what I consider to be the story goal is resolved. Uh, even though I know that then there's the there's the you know we've also identified it as the, um, the story goal being the, the family unit. But um, but it, I I just feel like that it's it's fixed attitudes that are sort of governing uh, uh, where are people coming from and 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 one of the reasons I say that is because when I, you know memories in terms of what exactly happened and and the way the mem you know uh, the way the memories seem to be uh, e even even Nader's own memories seem to be getting fuzzy about exactly what happened in that incident. Is, is a huge chunk of what's defining the overall story. But you also see impulsive responses, contemplations, especially contemplations when you're dealing with the, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, whether or not they should get divorced, um, and uh, and you know, an innermost desires, what's what's driving you, uh, you know, to prove my innocence or or to protect my daughter, 
you know, and so so the the the, the, the concerns I think resonate really strongly in the overall story. And but where I would take mind or fixed attitude, I would attribute most directly to Rose as the antagonist. Not, and, and, um, can I? I'm sorry. Can I interject again? Um, now the reason I did not choose mind. I mean, I, I accept everything that was just said as, as completely valid, but because of the definition, and part of the definition is the key is that the attitude is fixed, which has just been described, um, meaning it is accepted as a given and not re-evaluated. And I saw a lot of re-evaluation in this. Ah, and you have to be careful about what level you're seeing it, because you're going to see re-evaluation as a characteristic as well, down at the bottom. So it's not that it... It's not that it can't be reevaluated, but the, the the having the overall story as fixed attitude means there's a clash of fixed attitudes. It's not about a single fixed attitude. It's about incompatible fixed attitudes because it's uh, every story. Well, Whereas so putting, could it be argued then that the mom's fixed attitude is we shouldn't be raising our daughter here because she wants to leave the whole time. The dad always thinks they should. And they don't. Those don't change. Together. Yeah, those don't change over the, the crazy husband story. always thinks that he's just, the other guy's responsible. The wife, the other, you know, Riza always thinks that, you know, um, oh, well, I was supposed to crown and always, you know, tries to live according to her beliefs, and that's her fixed attitude that she can't doesn't want to sin. But she also, she also believes that she can't tell her husband anything because he's, as he is a hothead. Uh, yeah, and most of the women in this room dishonest something. Everyone's dishonest, I think. Uh, yeah, it's pretty evenly dishonest. But, and, but, and but if it's the women, the women are doing it because of such a show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're playing the man's game. Yeah, yeah. It's like only, the only way to survive here is to lie because they're all powerful and we have to find a way to work in the way. we got to work in the system as it's been built for us. Yeah. Okay, so and, and, and this and, whole passive-aggressive manipulation stuff, it's much better psychology. Right, because it is something that that is him. uniquely him and also variable. I mean, he does try, he does use different kinds of manipulation. And, and, but it's, it's also, I think, is very clearly shows a dysfunctional person. He's very dysfunctional. And he does not know how to, he does not how to deal with women at all. I mean, he's, you know, he's trying for his daughter, but he's really, you know, hard. He's, he's it also puts the relationship between he and his daughter in activity. No, in situation. I'm sorry. It's, oh, in situation, right. Which is the mother-daughter, uh, the father-daughter relationship. Right. You know, they can't. That's the, that is really the, the question is if that's going to hold up or not. Because the mother wants to split from, from her. And so the, issue, the, the, the problem is, are they going to remain a unit, a family unit of mother-daughter? Mother, a father daughter family unit or not. Um, whereas, you know, he puts her in activity and you see her being basically defined by all the things that she's doing. You also see, you know, Rose in the same area. So I do think it's very possible that because there are places where basically uh, Terme is pretty nondescript during parts of it. And I think you may get some of that argument between Made on on the part of Jose, but that's mostly of all stories. So. All right, but I think you know you could argue that some of the subjective story echoes out into uh, Rosé, uh, uh, you know, even if it's not strictly defined as that in that role. But but yeah, there there's 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 some stuff. There seems to be mm -hmm. some stuff going there. Yeah. We may find it much more strongly illustrated in themed, you know, thematic elements, very possibly. I have a suggestion for all four, but it requires one change. If we could say that um, Nader is a doer instead, then I could see him being in a situation of a present. The situation starts right at the beginning where my wife wants to leave me, my dad is uh, suffering from Alzheimer's, and now I've got the situation of this employee, whatever. Um, I see everyone really manipulating everyone else, uh, without exception, I would say. So, so the overall story would be any manipulation. I see uh, Raze as being in a fixed attitude, 
about clearly like what is right and what is wrong with the with respect to the Quran. Not even like about conscience, just about what these rules are um, that she's living by. <clears throat> and their relationship story would be an activity as far as determining who's at fault at you know causing the miscarriage. And I, I would. Think, I think if you didn't have the overriding you know family issue. Where you could limit it to just the, you know, once once Jose pretty much shows up on this on the scene, you might be able to make an argument for that. Although it still doesn't describe the way in which, um, the way in which he works, because he's you know he's definitely a, a manipulator. I'm not sure that everybody's a manipulator. Uh, somebody has their hand up. Go ahead and talk. Yeah. Um. I still saw the husband as a doer because he, I think at one point he actively goes. Looking for a uh, a helper, he when he's trying to prove his point about uh, shoving her down the steps, he physically walks, uh, does the pacing, and uh, is more active. But is, uh, but isn't that part um, of the overall story? Hmm, that's I mean, a question. If, if, it, if it's if if it's furthering the overall story, then. You know, no, the overall story is about the separation. But when he's on the stairs, that's what I'm arguing is a relationship story. It's, no, it's but, no, but you see the whole... But the, no, no, because part of the first stage of the separation was when Samin left, which meant that there was a hole in the operations of the family, which is why Rizzo was brought in to... Op to to do the job, essentially, uh, that Samin had abandoned, and so it was a it was a necessary function in the family, and of course, part of that involved, you know, doing you know, doing what's right. You know, she's got a job, so she's supposed to be there doing all these different things, and and you know, she's not. She's not part, not very good at that. For whatever reason, I mean, it's not a judgment. It's just it, it's not it. So, so that whole thing is really about all of that's about the maintenance and upkeep of the family, and it it's falling apart. Which is, you know, this is all about a conflict of a family that a separation starts that's going to end ends up in ostensibly a divorce, um, a permanent separation, uh, and I think that that. That's just a natural part of that process. You couldn't really, you know, that if you didn't move forward in, in that world, then there's really no growth in the overall story. It has to actually develop. It can't just sort of stay at the same, you know, you can't just stay in Act 1 and in, in the overall story. It really does need to change over the course of the story. And, and that's one of the things that, that um, Sandy was talking about, about, you know, the memories and impulsive responses most desires and, and contemplation that you see those sort of different acts. The first act, I imagine, would be contemplation, but uh, it seems mm -hmm. to be. Um, but you've got you know each of those being explored, even though it a lot of the physicality. You know, we are we we are both mental and physical creatures. We exist in phys the physical world, and we exist in the mental world. So you're going to have it happen in both, but what, when you choose a domain, what you're really doing is you're identifying the source of conflict within that domain. What causes, where's the source of the conflict that radiates out into everything? You know, you've got all the domains, so where's that pebble being dropped that causes the tsunami that affects the other three domains from that perspective? As opposed to the one that's for the main character, you look at the, you know, what what causes conflict for him personally that may radiate out into the other other areas and interfere with those. So I think that's the that's the, the reason I don't think we see him as a doer for him personally. We do see him sort of having to do things as the, the main story um, flows along in reaction to different decisions. Different decisions cause actions to follow. And those actions are the ones that you see a lot of his activity in. I think the whole do or beer question is answered in the first scene because he doesn't say, I'm going to do anything to make you want to stay. His reaction to the whole thing is, if you want to leave, I'm not going to stop. 
Right. Which is much more of a beer attitude than a doer. A doer would be, well, you know, I'm either going to do this to make you leave or I'm going to do this to, you know, make you want to stay. But he didn't want to, you know, he didn't do anything to kind of, if you want to leave, um, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to stand in your way. Which right. to me it's is also, much more It's beer. also passive, which is, which is hard because being a beer doesn't mean necessarily being passive. So right. It's just that it is a very right. passive way of being a beer. But, uh, I can see the axe playing through the overall story in fixed attitude, like what Sandy was saying, better than I see that in manipulation. So I'll can see that right, point. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, let's 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 go with this one since we're already an hour into this. Let's go with these domains and see if we can find corroboration that actually makes these choices either obvious, uh, better, or something that refutes it and clearly points us in a different direction. You know, we, we're at a place where it's really easy to make those kinds of changes. So why don't we do this? Did we install a copy of the software on here? Oh, well, are we st do we still have Rizzo? And as I, I see, are we comfortable getting her off of there and set in? Well, we're going to go with Tara but I still like thinking about her just to make to see if, in fact, she may be a handoff character. But the heart is, obviously. The heart is, no, the heart is with Tara I mean, you can see the mother, the father saw daughter scenes are the ones that really but she's, you know, really probing him, and when she lies for him, that's a pretty, you know, kind of a tough scene because he's like being such a. She is, uh, you know, the first time we see she's actually sort of compromising her own morals for him and lying. And it's interesting because, except for Samin. They're, you know, the, the other women that are on his side are keep they lie for him. And you know, even though the uh, the English teacher recants, but you know, what? I was he, never real sure why did she recant. I was I never understood. Well, because was it just because she got threatened? Or is that it? Yeah, right. yeah, she got threatened. She was just like, you know, he's saying I'm gonna I'll, I'll be out here for forever, and I will uh, at some point you're gonna be alone, and I'm gonna get you. And that was enough for her. She's like, a, you know, this is not my fight. I'm not. And it's interesting, you know, their, their system of law is very different from ours. You know, it's, you know, the fact that she recants is like, okay, she recanted, and that's it. There's like no, you know, there's nothing like, oh well, you know, she's going to be sued for perjury or anything like. Like that's like not even an issue. At least it's not even brought into discussion. But you know, if it was done in the United States, everybody'd be like, "Oh, they're lying on the stuff." But you know, the account kind of is really overt things. Okay, so let me just reduce the font size here. Even the fact that there didn't seem to be like any lawyers involved, they're all just in the same room fighting. Right. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. The judge is just listen to all. Yeah. And he's and he's like dealing with well a dozen other things at the right. same time. He's listening to us. Yeah. Sammy, what is this thing supposed to mean? Was that this meeting? Under the line? Well, it generally we try to end it by nine, nine thirty. But you know, we'll we'll work got twenty five minutes till nine. We might make it by then. When did you need to leave? Well, we basically have to leave at five to nine. Okay. Well, I'll let you. I was just someone who can give us a ride. Yeah, but there's also time. the clock is up there too, so you can in the upper corner, and there's a clock right behind you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then if you miss if you miss something, there will be a podcast and there'll be the uh, online thing so you could catch up with whatever we don't do. So let's see, we said he's a steadfast character. And we said beer and there. So decision option lock. So you said passive doesn't necessarily mean beer. Yeah. Is it, what's an example of a passive doer? What would a passive doer be? Well, it's a little easier to think of an assertive beer of the like Hamlet. He he decides he's going to go try to avenge his father by pretending he's crazy. He right. changes his behavior, um, and it's so effective it drives his girlfriend crazy and she kills herself. So you know it can't have the desired effect. Unfortunately, wrong target. Um, but that's that would be more of it what an assertive beer might look like. Um, a passive doer is someone who is okay. They do stuff, but they're, you think of them as lazy, spinning you know? their wheels, going nowhere. 
know. Yeah, I'll, I'll do, all right. Maybe. I'll address it. do the absolutely minimum to make, to make the effort. The easy way, right. the easiest solution or something. Pardon? Uh, it takes the easiest solution or something. Sure, the sure. I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. But it's... But, but not even possibly considering changing their mind about it. No, uh, okay, so... All right, so I'll buy her a box of chocolates. You know, hey, there's three bucks, fine. Il, Il Postino was a great example of a passive doer. Right. I mean, it's a long time ago, but I remember that was a very striking example of he, you know, he, he would go out and do things. He would take the flowers. He would, he would, uh, he was using the poems of Pablo Neruda uh, to try to woo this girl. But it was, you know, but it was really about the minimum effort he had. To get. But but he's just kind of spinning his wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So the overall story was. Uh, overall story is fixed. I cannot see the changes that you're making. Uh, the Dramatica oh. theme, br theme browser is on well, my we, video. I just put in the ones we'd already chosen, so that's okay. I, nothing has really changed. The items in blue are the ones that uh, we have chosen. Are they are they seeing your screen? No, they're, they're seeing, seeing my screen, but I already oh. made all the changes already. Oh, he oh sorry, he's already made the change. <laughs> you, you don't have a story from you. So it, no, no, I have it. Oh. I just have it on the. Oh, it you have okay. that for us. Fine. Yeah. Program <laughs> yeah. Yes, as well as identify the main character from the book. Because he's a beer, so there's only one of the choice. That's what it does feel like a spouse. Yeah, it does. Right. He's his own worst enemy. He's waiting for something to see. He's holding out for something to stop. Yeah. Basically, his life to give in. Well, we are, but that's not what he is. <laughs> that's not what he's all about. Okay. So, um, now what we want to do is we want to identify the concerns. And as I've mentioned before, the concerns, they really only have four choices. Uh, because the pattern is if you pick the upper le left corner for one, you pick it, uh, the upper left corner for all four dimensions. If the upper right, it's the same as all four. So you have either the past, understanding, memories, and developing a plan as a set, or how things are changing, doing impulsive responses, and playing a role, or the present, Gathering information, contemplation, and conceiving an idea, or the future, obtaining innermost desires, and changing one's nature. Now, one thing I just want to point out is that you will see all of these over the course of the story. Each of those four peak quadrants in any particular domain are going to be the focus of an act, <coughs> some order, depending on choices that you make. So the question really is, what's going to be the consistent part throughout? What's going to be the concern? If you're thinking about the overall story, what is the goal? Um, so if we're looking at the overall story of fixed attitude, what is you know the goal? Is the goal related to memories? Is the goal related to impulsive responses, to contemplation, uh, or to innermost desires? You know, what, what do the that seems to be the thing that everybody's attached to or, or considered. Um, for the main character, it's going to be, you can think of it as a main character goal, but it's really much more of a generalized concern, what, what area they're concerned with. So is, is um, Nader concerned with developing a plan, or playing a role, or considering an idea, or changing one's nature? Now, changing one's nature doesn't necessarily mean he's concerned with changing his own nature. He might be concerned with changing someone else's, or being changed by someone else. So it could be active or passive, in the sense of being acted upon or acting upon. Um, or, uh, the, you think of this, the, uh, the situation, which is where we have um, the relationship. Is the relationship about the past, how things are changing, the present, or the future? That might be, the, that might be an easier to look at, because we're looking at the father-daughter relationship. What is the what is the tension? Where's the tension grow between those two? Okay. Do you want to explain? Well, um, I guess I was looking overall at the whole story um, as very much a nation in transition and dragging its heels all the way and. Um, you know, the fixed attitudes of Islam 
with the westernized attitude that's <coughs> coming in. They've got cars and TVs, but they Did you see the same movie I did? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see that in the movie. I can certainly see how we could bring that to the movie, but I didn't see that in the movie. Well, I, I just felt like that um, a lot of the people were trying to get their impulsive response satisfied and uh, that the fixed attitudes came from all sorts of sources. I like impulsive responses as something that they use to put it out, and things are changing between uh, father and daughter, and that's the rest of the world. I'm going to have to change one of my things, and then playing a role seems to be something. Okay. Yeah, I think there's a lot more examples of impulsive responses being a concern. Um, Lee. <laughs> okay. uh, definitely the hot-headed husband is an issue for everybody yeah. involved. Okay. Um, in the court, uh, you know, when they're trying to figure out a small courtroom in the middle of the film, you know, there's, he's, uh, he's freaking out in there and whatnot, the husband. The main character can uh, keep his responses in check. Um, you could say maybe the dad, he has an impulse control problem as he's wetting the bed, that kind of stuff, and the stuff that, uh, that the pregnant woman has to deal with um, because her, the sort of stuff that's been ingrained in them. To, I, I see some of the, the uh, country in, in transition sort of thing, too, as far as okay. overall thematically. Where do we see that? Um, that that's coming from the van, because I certainly yeah, yeah, no, I it imposed. You know. um, because of the way that they deal with um, the way that they deal with problems and the way that they deal with issues between the two of them is set, you know, the, the pregnant woman is still set in sort of the old way of, of doing things. The, Poor old father. Right, father sure. Um, supposed to be rich other woman. Right. Well, so I guess I'm equating that with. Uh, so I'm saying the reason I'm saying that is because we do see economically the difference. We don't know if that's tied to, you know. Okay. That's not presented as a problem in and of itself. No, no, it isn't. But isn't that where they're coming from? Isn't that why they're having these issues? Is because of yeah. those I mean, differences? A lot of the lines are very impulsive. There is yeah. there is certainly, at the heart, there is a lot about Islam. We are, and it is implied about what the wealthier people think about. They don't actually say it except the only time she's, the only time it's said is when she makes the comment about, I don't want to bring her up here. Right. And she doesn't say why. Well, I think it's assumed that it's... Your assumed. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I, no, I think the filmmaker, it's how women are treated in... Right, how women are yeah, treated, yeah. but that's... but Right, I agree. It's, it's how women are treated, but we don't see... We see that happening... And I think the way they're treated is impulsively, like nobody thinks about right. what okay. they do. Yeah, okay, that's, that's right. Thing. Okay, that... Yeah, that, that, that and so that. For, for him, um, he's all about his essence, like just being the problems he causes of his passive aggressiveness, which is a bean sort of thing. Well, he's trying to be a good father. He's trying to be a good son. Y yeah. Know? Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to be a good He's trying to be a good family man, really, and he's trying and he's trying to be a good employee. He rules. He's grown up to be trained. True. Right. And, and he's trying to be a good husband too. He doesn't want to be a good all right. knows about that. Really She's not going to be there. I'll do the laundry. Yeah, it's no problem. What button do I hit? Like that kind of thing. Right. Um, and then as far as her impact on him, it's, you know, what she does, you know. The daughter. The daughter, like, who she goes with, who she's. Well, her homework. Homework, uh, um, the, you know, the gas the station work. incident, that kind of stuff. Has an impact on him, whether or not he's winning, you know, whether or not he's getting to her. And then progress or how, how things are changing. To me, it's like just the two of them fighting to keep it from not falling apart. Working together, yeah, to to hold progress at, at bay. Well, also I think it goes from being completely father daughter to a little more of a team, of a 
Pontus? No, but 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 that he acknowledges her insights and actually, you know, does show weakness to her where he would not normally at all show weakness because it's not a very positive trait. And she is willing to bend to try to continue the relationship because she's afraid that it will that you know he'll be you know, jail. Um, and that but only after she understands the nature of what's really going on, after he sort of comes clean to her, you know, that they sort of, you know, he sort of pressures her and eventually he finds it tells her the truth. But, but you know, she she sees this is a process and she's trying to trying to make it so that they will they will work well together. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the reasons why that's where I think we see the implication that she's gonna choose him. Other than yeah, the last thing. I mean, you know, and again it's like that apparently the filmmaker purposely left out information. Um, you know well interpret the reasons you know as, as, as to what as to what exactly the mother's agenda was. Why yeah. she wanted to bring the daughter out of that. That's just kind of left to us to fill in those, those gaps. Right. That and that and that could have gone a long way toward us interpreting who she might have gone with at the end. But but it's that, we don't see any like the only relationship we see between them is a daughter appearing to not really want to be with him. Like she doesn't there's not really any connection No, she has a really strong relationship with her mom. Starts off with there's a really strong relationship with her. She has this secret. She knows her, her mother's already revealed to her that she's not this is this is play acting. I wish you also so did the but but it's that it's it's you know this is she's trying to get a rise out of her husband mm -hmm. and the false responses she's trying to get him to say capitulate uh, capitulate and and he doesn't he like completely you know there's no reaction at all he's like completely shut down and by the end he's a little bit you know he's, he's maybe a little less shut down than before but he's still pretty. Much shut down. I, don't know, I didn't sure. get as much from their relationship. Like I felt like there was a much stronger relationship between the daughter and just the father. And the situation. Uh, so, so, is, uh, everybody okay with that? We want to explore yeah. something different. Well, yeah. I, here's the thing. Well, as I was watching, I think God, this is really, really big about memories, you know. But and truth and falsehood in particular. There's a lot of truth and falsehood, and so. Um, yeah, but look who it is right now. That's for Tamir. And it really only comes up in one act where that's a huge issue. Mm -hmm. You know, the third act is where it really is a big deal. The investigation. No, well, the, and then you got investigation, doubt, appraisal, repraisal. So like, I mean, you know, yeah, that's that's contem and in contem I mean, contemplations. I think could be yeah. the over the over the concern. Well, I think it's throughout the whole thing with her. I mean, she knows that the mom leaving is false. That the mom's not really going to leave. She knows that threat's false. She met uh, the. Uh, like pretty early on, the mom tells her, "Oh, your dad knew." So the whole issue of you know, you know, her dad said, "Oh, no, your mom just trying to you know get you to turn on me." So like, there's all this stuff about you know, who do I trust? What's true? What's false? I mean, it kind of goes throughout the whole thing in little bits and pieces. But I see. It but but for thing. her, and the effect it has on him. Remember, she's the influence there. That's why it's important. The effect it has on him is in that third act. If she lies for him, that's what has the biggest influence. And biggest and basically is where she begins to change. You know, that's where we start to see her keeps him out of prison. You know, she he's the steadfast character and she is changing for him and that's where that particular one has has an effect. Um, well let's 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 make this choose one. Here's the thing, in terms of the group of four, I think that's the strongest argument. But in terms of I think contemplations would be really strong mm -hmm. concern. Yeah. Uh, but oh, is I, it, I, I, oh, that's I mean, no, that's right. Overall, the main of I thought we were picking impulsive responses. No? Oh, I, you sure. Sorry, yeah, I sorry. Confusing, but, well, I have uh, a suggestion for another four. Okay. Um, so I, I mean, I like the arguments that were listed there for this for what was just talked about, but I'm also considering, um, say, innermost desires for fixed attitude because the story is really about the separation. And it's about um, what S Simon is starting this separation, this divorce, 
not because she wants the divorce, but she wants him to ask after her. She's trying to manipulate him into expressing more emotion about their relationship, but I don't see that as impulsive. I see that as an innermost desire. Under well, changing... If you think of impulsive responses as like trying to get a, get a reaction, well, you know, built in the mind is an instinctual base of reactions and attitudes that cannot be altered but merely compensated for it. So it's, it's, you know, she's doing this because she's trying to shock him into, you know, dealing with this because he's, obviously this has been going on for some time, it's been a long conversation and she finally it's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta do something that uh, just, you know, get him to react, and he doesn't. He's like, you know, in that scene, you know, she's the one who's, you know, very passionate, and he's just like, you know, stone. And he does get more and more impulsive as the story goes on, but he really, he still pretty much stays... I know what you're saying, but that's more than his own personal. Thing. But, but I mean, how how is it impulsive if he has an opportunity throughout the beginning, all the way to the end of the film? At any time, he could have talked to Simon and said, "Hey, I want you to stay." That doesn't seem like impulsive to me. Oh no! He, no, the question of him wanting her to stay is never. I don't think is ever an issue. He states that up front. He, yeah, he wants her to stay. He does not want his daughter to leave, or he's willing to let his daughter choose. But his daughter was well, trying to get him to uh, talk to Simon and say, I want you to stay. stay. She should be a good wife and stay. Yeah, if I can inter uh, interject, you're using the word impulsive, which is one of the new vocabulary words, but with the traditional yeah. vocabulary, it's the preconscious. And in the preconscious definition, we have. Attitudes that cannot be altered, but merely compensated for. And I think that the key word compensated or compensated is what applies here. So he's not impulsive about things, but he does make a lot of compensations along the way. Right. Yeah, for impulsive did, responses. Is did I go off topic? Huh? Did I go off topic or miss something entirely there? There was a delay no, no, after no. I he said that. He was just saying that the, the, the original term, it's, we have a set of original terms where instead of impulsive responses, that label said preconscious. He actually, you'll see down here, if I can bring it up, he actually, um, uh, oh, you can't see it, but, it's, but you can see in the definition below, that's where he's pulling that from. So the definition didn't change. We just changed the label because it's a little more digestible than preconscious. Well, sure, that. but but the way it was being explained, it sounded. Uh, Corey, forgive me if I misunderstood you, but it sounded like the word impulsive was being used in the contemporary sense, the contemporary yes. definition of the word. Right, and it's really more knee-jerk reactions, uh, you know, um, and it's and it's about the built-in filters that we have, right. either breaking down filters or building them up. And look at and again, look at Roger, uh, the help. He has she, no built-in. Well, she. Well, he does. He does. Well, he doesn't he at all. Reaction. But she. But she. Um. She's totally oh, operating Roger, out of right, panic. Her husband is right. The, the, the lady, the pregnant lady, is totally operating out of panic because her her husband's already in trouble with her creditors. Uh. She. she she's worried about you know. And she, you know. She, we'll see you next week. Okay. Uh. She. She's. She's obviously worried about her making up enough money to get through, you know, this pregnancy. And um, thanks for listening to that. Um, and she's she's totally operating out of panic mode, and and you see that evidenced in the in, in the way she refuses to leave. You know, it's never I, it's never really answered. One one aspect of this story that's not answered is what money was missing and who and ultimately yeah. why was it missing. Yeah, that was yeah. yeah. Like that was edited or something. You never really understood why. I, 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 I had a ticket. He was going to find the money in the little girl's backpack. Well, when, he said, when she said my mom didn't take it, and he said, I know. I was wondering if that's what they're getting at the little girl's No, no, wait. Ticket, no, it didn't. No, they never explained they why. Never, they never explained why. The closest they but got. The closest was when he had the conversation with the daughter the who said, I, yeah, his my kid, mom didn't take her the daughter, money. Right, my mom didn't take the money, and he goes, I know. Yeah, I know. That, that plus the scene of the little girl. Tweaking the oxygen stuff. Yeah, what was it? Then? Yeah, oh, she sure. takes the money to pay. Oh, the guy. I did not yeah. Oh, I need it. Oh, oh. Right, right, right. 
Okay. So Samin took the money. Samin yeah. took the money. That's what. That was the money that was missing. Yeah. Oh. And then who she blamed the. Same for the piano to be moved. Oh, yeah. Right, the yeah, extra the, day. The extra flight of stairs. Oh. Oh. Are you saying that was the daughter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, yeah. Was the wife. that was the wife. Him and the wife. Oh, the wife. Okay. Yeah, wife. Yeah, the wife. The wife took it to pay the the movers. Oh. The piano movers, because they were only supposed to do it for two floors, not three floors. Oh, there was so, such a long distance between those two things. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's right, she didn't have the money, so then she went and got the money. But it didn't, she didn't make a big deal of it, so. But she, yeah. she didn't tell him that she was. No. And she didn't, and so he didn't know. So when he, when he found the money missing, he, he just he sort of added it, you know. And and then, and so she reacted very impulsively, and that. Well, he reacted impulsively, with throwing her out. Well, it, because like, of her, yeah, right, right. because so she was, she went to leave. The whole she scene. Well, she came back. back. Right, she came back. Yeah, he threw her out. She came back. I mean, he was impulsive because he was upset about his dad, and like that. But, was but she she was she was in panic mode the whole time because she had already been hurt. She had already been hit by a car. She didn't want she didn't want to tell that because I guess she felt guilty that. She, she, you know, that the, that didn't that her husband to know. Well, that that the no, grandfather but she didn't lock the door. Again, it's the, the, right, that she screwed up. Walked out. Well, or that she it, felt like she screwed well, up. It was more. I mean, when she was explaining it to the wife. It was more that she didn't want her husband to know she was working. And right. Found out about the miscarriage. He would ask, "Well, why were you there in the first place?" So right. He'd find that. And out. every time that started to come up, she would divert conversation. Yeah. Her. In the hospital, and she wasn't going to tell him at the hospital. No, the only no. reason he found out she was working at all was because they showed up and were like, you know, we should, okay, what's going on? Yeah, and so she's totally operating from that, from the, uh, you know, the uh, the stem part of her brain. She's just in <laughs> yeah. panic mode. I mean, not e not even subconscious. I, I think it's not even so well, much. Well, he is too because he's he's got so many things going on that he can't seem to, you know, between his his father, you know, and then this. You know the help who's not doing it, not not any help. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So what about let's look over at our main character. So we see him and knowledge, thought, ability, and desire. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? When you go down, it's really cool. Well, I. I, I, I <laughs> well, I okay. Know it's uh, down there. All right. Actually, okay. Well, then that's it. It is lining up for me. So I don't that works. That works for page. me. Yeah. There's one. That because as here's the thing, I was as I was watching it, it occurred to me. Oh, I think I know where you're going. Oh, the, <laughs> are you talking about this group, or are you talking about this group? It's the proven unproven, right? Mm -mm. No, you're, okay. No, accurate in it, not accurate. That's what I thought originally yeah. was proven unproven, but accurate, not accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and that cause and effect you see uh, all of, all over. But, but that's got to be the symptom and response. No, that's the problem. But for it's him, his problem. problem. Oh, this is his main character. Right, main right, character. Right, 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 right. His yeah. abilities, his abilities, are, are constantly being tested. He's trying to yes. live up. It's more like disabilities because he's got too much on his plate. And he's trying to live up to what he, you know, should be able to do. Um, and versus the desire, you know, I mean, you know, it's like, well, he and desires that his wife would stay around, but he and can't. I couldn't possibly have caused this accident. I am, I am not able to have done that. It is impossible. I don't have that ability to do that. But accurate and non accurate. I was thinking in the middle of it. And I wasn't trying to think, okay, what, what concern what quadrant is that in? Blah blah blah. But I was totally thinking the accurate non accurate seems to describe the source of problems here. Yeah. Oh oh no. Oh, so no. Oh yeah, that's think, a uh, symptom in response. response. Because it's a steadfast. So it's right. So point. he's focused on he's focused on Accurate, not well, accurate being the symptom, yeah. accurate being the response. Because this problem is caused. Like, yeah, right. okay. using a driver. Not fault. Yeah, not my fault. Not my fault. I didn't cause fault. this. Uh, if you that want, you, you yeah, get to no, choose. Okay. You get to choose. It's not me. Mm -hmm. You you get to be the cause of this. It's always deferring that off. Whatever. <laughs> and the oh, tragic part is, yeah, daughter. But, does but it everybody. Again, it gets back to he he is of uh, course. Directorially, he's portrayed in the first part of the movie not as a main character that we are emphasizing. We're just watching him from a distance, but gradually we start to empathize. And you know, I mean, it's almost like you're going down the layer. He, he's being set up as being a typical Persian douchebag, but you know, but <laughs> <laughs> now, now I have, have to make this. Now, now you have to make this. <laughs> uh, but 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 it's like, but then we get to like him because especially when 
we we see what happened. Uh, you know, and the, the well, the, he's understandable. That's well, we see we, what we, we, yeah, he's understandable. We understand what's motivating him. We understand why he's doing it. He's doing it out of a good place. He does have those qualities that are not likable, but, but they're not uniquely his. And by comparison to some of the other men, he's actually quite like normal. Yeah. So yeah, or likable and responsible. Yeah. yeah. So so it, responsible. it is it is interesting the way the movie is portrayed the the choices that were made. I don't know if they were conscious conscious or or just. That's just how it came out, but um, but it yeah. Well, if uh, we if we choose cause as his the source of his conflict, since he's a steadfast character, it's not really problem. It really is more dry. Um, and in some future version, at some point, we'll have something that designates it. Mm -hmm. That will identify in fact that because he's a steadfast character, it'll sort of change the language. But not now. Right now, it's called an empty problem, but as a step as character, that's the source of drive. So he's going to think the problem is coming from the symptom, which is things that are non-accurate. They're outside of tolerance. This is intolerable. Yes. I can't, can't accept this. this. Can't it is intolerable. So uh, I, you, I will sign this if you make it tolerable for me by pro proving to me that you are an honest woman, that you that what you are saying is completely is accurate. true. Yes, it's it's accurate. accurate. We're on the ground. Yeah, and that's um, where that's where that comes. From. So okay, so that takes us back to the overall story. So of, if we go the, the problem is well, the problem is then is result or process. It's um, the problem is pro so the, the problem is the process. Is process. And again, we have the the symptom is not accurate where we get that all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, I can do this job or or not doing the job with intolerances. You know, leaving the the father, the grandfather. Tied up to a bed and leaving the house, leaving the door unlocked. Um, the wife at the beginning saying, "This is intolerable. I can't bring my daughter up in this world." Uh, the wife saying, "I can't. You know, it's intolerable that my husband is. You know, he's got to get money because if all of his creditors are putting him in jail, and my family's going to starve." I mean, you see that all over. I think a big part of the overall story, <clears throat> as far as the problem process, is the Iranian system of justice. I think was a huge thing. It's a running theme, yeah. Yeah. They were trying to show, like, indicting that system, indicting this the process of like all the well, stuff you have to go easy. through, and you know, you have to come and talk to me, you talk to this judge, and then you have to. Bring it on. I just, when I was watching, I was always like, oh, this is. The no, problem is being, the process, process being the problem. And you had mentioned earlier when you were talking about the relationship that the problem between the two of them was the process, or she was trying to do some kind of process. Right. Which yeah, you end up, yeah, which will end up being the same. Right, the relationship process is the, you know, we were talking about this process, but so it's the conflict of them having to, you know, is this process bringing them closer together, or is it, you know, it's causing, Conflict. Um, and by the way, we're not down to one story form yet. We still. You, well, yeah. I'll bet you I know which one we still have left. Well, could, no. it, could it possibly be the no. judgment? No, well, no, unique ability. Yeah. Yeah. Did you leave? I, did you leave? Uh, I, good or bad, I didn't know. Did you pick that? That's bad. Yeah, I figured it was. Well, can, can, can we look at the unique uh, the unique ability critical flaws and sure. uh, so see I'll go back to one. The, if there's one that sounds than, way better than one. Yes, oh, I'll go back to the story yeah. for that. Okay, so the main character unique ability choices are. Um, well, that's not going to be. The overall story, okay, critical flaw, value, or worry for the main character. Um, What's better if you do the overall story? So you mean the catalyst? Yeah. Catalyst, confidence, or work? Seems to be more of a work issue, but uh, I'm not sure. Confidence. Well, everybody, is, there's a lot of confidence by the way for people I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. Hmm. I can see the inhibitor. That works for you. They don't know what exactly what's going on. This is a flaw. 
The benchmark for the overall story would be either innermost desires or contemplations. Mm -hmm. um, I feel contemplations is bigger. That's what than I was thinking. Wow, well, that was my intent. Okay, so influence character, unique ability, skill, or light. I probably would put enlightenment. Yeah. 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 Really? Yes. Yeah, well, skill seems Skills. skill seems more sensible in the sense that when they're talking about, you know, her. Remember the the scenes where they have it. And she's supposed. To, she's. She's got the definitions of the words, but she's not using the, the Farsi word. She's using whatever the word that her teacher says, and he says, "Well, you know, you got to use the Farsi word." And she says, but I'll lose points, and he's like, well, that's the right word, you know. And I definitely see that as not an enlightenment issue, but much more of a, you know, person. Yeah, but that, does that does that does that serve to get under the skin? You know, um, it sure seems to well, because where, where, she's basically questioning him as a father because the teacher says this is the way it is, and he's saying no, this is the right way because it's the Persian way. And that seemed to be in the way. And I put them into a to conflict, which, you know, I'm just, I mean, that's just, for me, to be one thing from a fact, back, hmm, hmm. Those are both pretty good. Yeah. Still, it's better to keep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but we're looking, I'm kind of looking at them on their own merit. Uh, influence character, I think it's important. And then the catalyst in relationship. Well, you're a security. There's not some things that didn't help. Inhibitor. Experience would still seem to go with that skill thing. Benchmark of probably the first. So let's see if we choose bad. What if what, which of those? It, oh, let's come. Okay, let's look over here for a second. Let's look at for warning. Changing this nature. Showing bad. So this is this is indicating that it's going to fail. Ooh, changing was nature actually sounds. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. but, uh, okay. Um, we're going to do this. So we end up with confidence, knowledge, ability, value, changing was nature, and those desires. Mm -hmm. Skill, or that skill, catalyst of security, and security, right? They got those in the in the future. This actually, to me, the benchmark of the future for the relationship. That sucks. So I knew the future had to be in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just had to, because but it seems much better. Is, is there a future here or not? Out of curiosity, what would look like the future? Maybe the other choices. <laughs> I'll do yeah, that. So I don't want to pick any one of them. Uh, we end up with um, catalyst of worth, inhibitor of desire, capability of thought. Hardly. No. Yeah. Hardly. Bad. Bad. Yeah. Bad. 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 He is not. That is not making him uniquely skilled. I'm sorry. Thought. I didn't even look there. Uh, what was the other option on that one? Uh, thought. Uh, I think it was the knowledge. No. No, it's thought or uh, just, yeah, okay. it's, uh, unique ability of ability. ability. Oh, all right. Which yeah. is, because it's a failure story, it doesn't. Happen. He, you know, he does have the ability. He could make it happen. Oh, he yeah. could. He could go. He could say, "All right, let's let's move." He had. He absolutely has that in his ability, and he does not choose to exercise because of the critical it. ballot. Law of values. Those values, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the, the values of being 
from her learning, getting an education in Iran is a very, very high value to him. But was, mostly, mostly he's he's tied down by his father. Um, right. I mean that's and, and his values in general. You know, yeah. those are the things that that, that you know keep him where he is. Yeah. I thought the mother-in-law was fascinating character because she was so outreaching to him. Yeah, she's a, she's a poor character. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's definitely a side you know sidekick type of a character, which is. Not the normal mother-in-law we would no, expect. She's not taking sides. Especially oh, since the daughter her. is like, the, 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 her daughter is the one who's like, yeah. leaving. Yeah. It's almost like, oh, forget my daughter. You know, you, 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 you know, your your family. We well, don't see you. You mean it's the granddaughter? What's all this? You know, that was it. Was very the culture is very different. It was really interesting that way. Um, Does anybody know what, how this was received in Iran? Yes. How was it? Yeah, it was very well received. I'm not sure by the government. <laughs> well, it's no, not I political, it was, right? No, they they kept it, was, it because they didn't make it political. All the places where they could, um, the most political it was is what it had to say about uh, women, and the primary proponent of that is the loser. <laughs> so, right. Right. The implied loser, even though we don't yeah. really know, but she's the one who you know wants them all to move and. And she doesn't get away. And the ostensibly, traditional the values. traditional values are what are withheld and are upheld. So, um, yeah, I like this story form. This is a nice story yeah, form. Yeah, that looks a lot better than Can I embarrass myself one moment? Of course. <laughs> okay. Um, I was waiting. Maybe I'm speaking as American. I was waiting until the end when maybe the uh, grandfather turned out to be the one who took the money because they kept going to him as like a red herring. Right. Because oh. yeah. <laughs> they showed him earlier, walk, he, walk, he left the building and he was across the street doing something and he was clearly conscious through the movie of what, what was going on. He just, it's more like his speech was impaired. Yeah, no, he was doing what he, 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 was, he was definitely one of those, uh, you know, uh, Creatures of habit. Creatures of habit, yeah. He, d he had very limited things he could do, and he would do them over and over. You know, his impulsive responses were pretty much set in place and, um, you know, and degrading. You know, I think that was part of the, you know, maybe. He actually did speak after, you know, the father, after um, Nader said he didn't speak anymore. Did it's like right after that, the, the, his father said something. It's like one or two words, but it's sort of like when when uh, Samin was there talking to him and he was saying, you know, blah blah, blah and then the father said said something, and it seems like ignores it because it was not. Yeah, <laughs> it was just like. What am I to say? No, he didn't say they just like completely ignored it. I thought, oh, okay, so we know that he's. It's not really an issue. It did not cause permanent, you know, damage, and it's really and it was good that he chose. One thing is, is that he did do everything to try to keep the family together. He chose not to pursue that lawsuit because his values were that family is more important, and um, I don't want to put my father through this. You know, when they're in the examination room. You know, so that was a, you know, that's again, that was one of those things where he's starting to get a little lot more life of it. You know, he's doing things that are aren't completely self-serving. Um, so. No. And then again, at the end, if he wasn't being good, you know, if he was being himself with his family, he wouldn't put the caveat on the money, and then, like, you have to swear in the Quran falls. Like, he would have done that, he would have written the checks if that would have been the end of it. Right. Well, he's still a dick. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's just, my life. So, so, he's he's mm -hmm. bad news, and the other husband's worse than no, Yeah, they're, they're definitely worse. And <laughs> the women aren't, you know, they each have their issues that they're dealing with. Although I, I would thought it was interesting. I really thought that the other husband was going to know that he had done it. Like I thought, I thought they were going with that. He he had somehow caused it. He knew it the whole time, but he actually didn't know. I thought that was interesting. I was waiting for him to be revealed that he was lying. Which is worse, you know. Which is which is worse, a, a, a stronger indictment of culture, because it's basically saying that, it, you know, you you'd rather have somebody else get blamed for your child's death. Then tell your husband that it may have been caused by an accident. That 
you know, and that you were no. It's more important that you that blame somebody else for the death than let your the husband know that you were working when he does not have a job. And it's working at a man's house where there are no adult women. Yeah. And there are two adult men and one teenage girl. Which that's the that's the thing. That's why he that's why the husband goes into the her husband goes nuts and starts to you know kind of kick the crap out of Nader at the hospital. Yeah. And everybody stands outside and is like, You come out here. Oh, no, no, no. But, yeah, he's a he's it, it is not good for you know, married women to be alone with any man. Yeah, well they get it would have been okay if he'd wipe it. Especially if he touches her, yeah. which he did. You know, and then shoving, I mean, it's touching her in a, in a forceful way. <laughs> it's so wrong on so many levels. And that everybody, did you see with me that we saw her basically sit on the stairs? They had, right. they had the fight, and then she goes outside with her daughter and goes about two steps and sits. Right. And and so it's kind of like, it was there to show us that she was not telling the truth. Now, he kind of hit her, but he didn't fall down. Well, he stairs. pushed her out of the door and That's closed it. the door. Right. And then we see her sitting down. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, that's the only truth about falling down the stairs. Mm -hmm. No, and, and they, I mean, they really did make the physics of it virtually impossible for him to cause exactly. the accident there. Oh, no, she did not fall. We saw her kind of potter down two steps on her own power with her back to him. Yeah, I, mean, I never questioned whether or not he caused it. I was just wondering what the final reveal of what actually caused it was going to be. Right. If it would have been her husband really hitting her yeah. or you know, something else. Because, well, then you knew that she was going to see a gynecologist yeah. and he'd overheard it, which is the thing that tripped him up about whether or not he knew she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And then, they, then he finds out from her daughter that she had gone to see a doctor. Or, no, uh, his wife, if it's me that finds that out. Yeah. Anyway, the, the, the idea is that. No, well, it's it never ever really comes of that. Like, you never really find out. Like, the doctor never says what she went to the doctor for. Yeah, matter. It, it doesn't matter, and just, who knows if they, you know. It, all it did is it opened up the the um, question of there was something, possibly something wrong even before that event. Yeah. That's, that, that turned it from being a certainty to a possibility. Mm -hmm. And of course, it ended up being that, yeah, it had nothing at all to do with it. Are there any, any other questions uh, before we wrap this up? Um, I'd like to ask a question off topic um, of the story, but on topic to story expert, which is shown in front of us. Um, if you have a moment for this, uh, the other sure. year, the other year, I asked about integrating some of Armando's formulas into the next version of Dramatica. Is there one? You need to stop the recording. I'm um, sure. We're gonna actually uh, let's just we're gonna stop the I'm gonna stop the audio and then.